evening, everyone. It's Mac. Welcome to Personal Foul. I'm Matt Claire, and uh, we have Derek Gervin, basketball, uh, former basketball star uh, with the New Jersey Nets and the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, really made hay overseas. And uh, uh, he's our expert. And uh, Derek, welcome aboard, man. How you doing? How you doing, Mac? I, I, you make me nervous when you call me an expert, but <laughs> other than that, I'm, I'm doing well, and I thank you for that. <laughs> well, so before we get started, first of all, I'll, I'll tell you we're, we're having our first show tonight. Uh, so those of you who are uh, watching and listening, welcome. We thank you for tuning in. Uh, but before we get started on talking about the NBA, I I do want to touch on something that is equally as important, if not more important. Uh, Derek's heart is with the youth of, well, we're in the San Antonio area, so the youth of San Antonio is special. And um, those of you who are in the know, I don't need to tell you that uh, Derek has some San Antonio ties here. So there are a ton of reasons why uh, he feels as strongly as he does about the kids here. But Derek has a program uh, directed at the youngsters. Basketball is involved, but I'll let him tell you more about it. But it involves giving encouragement, teaching respect, discipline, all those things that parents ought to be teaching their kids. And unfortunately, that's not always the case. So, Derek, I'm going to ask you to talk about your program for a moment. Well, first, I'm going to say good evening, everybody, and uh, thank you for tuning in. And I'm, I'm just glad that you've been a part of the show. I hope you continue to be a part of the show because uh, I only think it's going to start off good today and it's going to only get better as we move forward. Well, Mac, uh, I've been in San Antonio now uh, since 1982. I moved down here from Detroit, Michigan uh, after my high school days. And I uh, ended up going to the University of Texas, San Antonio. Uh, it's kind of funny how that panned out because I was originally going to either Michigan, University of Michigan or DePaul. Uh, but all of a sudden I was told that my family was moving to Texas, to San Antonio, a city I had never heard of before. Uh, and a true story, I'd never heard of it. Uh, but my brother was traded from the Virginia Squires of the ABA. Um, for those of you who don't know my brother, they call him the Iceman, George Gervin. So uh, George was traded to San Antonio. So um, one day my sister calls and talks to my mom in Detroit. And she tells my mom she wants her to uproot to Texas, which of course the young son was myself. Uh, and so mom kind of wanted me to uproot with her. Now keep in mind, I was uh, going to DePaul or University of Michigan, but uh, my family kind of thought I was needed to get away from the, uh, the, I'll say the lifestyle that we were living, that I was living in Detroit. And uh, they were kind of wanted me to get away. So George kind of talked to me about having a fresh start. So I thought about it, thought about it, and I ended up saying, okay. So I um, you know, took my behind to San Antonio. I get down here, um, you know, I worked with my family for a few years. Uh, my sister is currently the state representative for the east side of San Antonio as we speak. So I got down here, um, I started going to the, uh, what they call the George Gervin Youth Center. We had a youth center that my brother and my sister put together. Uh, it's been going on now approximately about 30 years. So then they started a school called the George Gervin Academy. And I started working at the school. Uh, I thought that was my calling at the time because it was, I gave me an opportunity to deal with young people. And my life has basically been built around young people. Uh, I, I, I get emotional talking about them. So I started a Team Gervin. A basketball program. And um, it was basically about, you know, teaching kids about just doing the right things, making good decisions. Uh, none of us are perfect. Of course, we all um, have had our challenges in life. Uh, but I was one, I just thought it was important to talk to these kids, especially in this era that we're in today, about making good decisions. So I started my team, Gervin. Um, I've always been like, I don't have kids. So these kids, uh, to me, uh, they like like a reflection of myself. They're like an extension of me. And I wanted them to uh, be able to make good decisions uh, every day, Monday through Sunday, or Sunday through Saturday, I'll say, since Sunday is really the first day of the week. And so I wanted them to just be able to make good decisions. Um, and I started a thing called um, All A Monday, Mac. And I'm telling this for all of you out there. 
the kids know that after our practices, when we all get in the huddle, I was always about the school day, the next day. So if say if it was a Wednesday, I was big on tomorrow being all a Thursday. And the reason I say that is because I, you know, I believe in the student athlete, but more so than that, I believe in scholar athlete. And so that's what I'm about. Uh, I figure if you could be a student athlete, it just takes a little more effort for you to be a scholar athlete. And when you're scholar athletes, you usually always have something to fall, fall back on, a plan A, a plan B, plan C, whatever it may be. And I got all this from my sister. So uh, I'm dealing with kids is my life. Uh, I'm just starting back up with my team, Gervin, again. And I'm going to be uh, back coaching and all of that. But as you know, uh, we're starting the high school season now. But I'm ready to get back in the mood, in the mode. Um, I'll be going to a lot of high school games, cheering on some of the young people that I've coached in the past. And there's no better feeling for me um, than to see these kids now. Some of them are, and they might be ROTC, they might be swimmers, uh, they might be basketball players. But more so than that, they're good people, good human beings that are trying to do something good out in society. And for me, that's the biggest gift that I can get from these young people is seeing them going out here and, and making a life for themselves and trying to do better for themselves and for their family. And that's the biggest part that excites me. Yes, indeed. Well put, well put. Okay. So uh, to find out more about your program, do you have a website? Well, right now I don't because I'm just starting back up. But if they have any questions for me, Mac, if I don't mind, if you don't mind, I can give these. I'll give them my email address because I don't mind people having it, and I want them okay. to contact me. Uh, they can contact me. My email is lowercase d g e r v i n v as in Victor d Gervin twenty one at gmail dot com. And if you want to talk to me further, you can reach me on that site, and I will get back with you. And uh, once I start my link back up, I'll. Look let Mac know, and he can give you the, the information. But until then, if you want to contact me, you can contact me once again at dgervin, D-G-E-R-V-I-N, 21 at gmail.com. And I'll make sure to pass along whatever information uh, you give me. So I'm, I'm taking my glasses off of this. So I want you all to listen to me. All right. When Derek sends me the information, pass on to you, I encourage y'all to pay attention to what this man is doing, all right? Especially those of you in the San Antonio area who have kids, give him a look, okay? All right. So I love you, now, that, wow. now that we did that, uh, I was, our primary purpose tonight is to talk about the NBA season. And by the way, I'm assuming if you're listening to this, you're an NBA fan. At least I hope they are. And so you <laughs> might not be the NBA fan that I am or that Derek is, but you're some, but you're some sort of a fan. So uh, I've already did this off screen with Derek, but I will wish you all Merry Christmas. I mean, I feel like it's Christmas time for those of us <laughs> who are big basketball fans, you know? I mean, never mind football. I'm, this is my time of year right here. It goes from late October right through into the spring. But Derek, you know, you and I have talked off camera about this a number of times, how difficult it is to pick teams that we expect to not only get to the playoffs, but to actually make some noise in the playoffs because, uh, there I go, I almost went to the Western, Western Conference. Um, believe me, we're going to get to the Western Conference, folks. That is the harder conference of the two. Um, in the East, we already know one and two is Boston and Milwaukee or Milwaukee and Boston. I think, you know, the Kanye Shantes will agree to that. Um, but after that, man, it's, it's a roll of the dice. I know you're high on Miami. Well, I'm high on Miami because they made a few additions. Um, last year they were short a big man. And so they brought in a backup for Bam Adebayo. Um, I really wish they had brought in a guy that could start. Um, but they did bring in a serviceable big man, um, Thomas Bryant, who was with the Lakers last year. And then they ended up sending him to Denver Nuggets. 
So he sat it there. He didn't play much with the Nuggets. And then now this year he gets traded and he goes and plays with the Miami Heat. Um, so I think that's a good addition for them. But they also have a young man uh, from UCLA, uh, Jaquez, trying to think of the last name. Uh, Vasquez, I believe it is. Jaquez Vasquez, I believe is his name. Um, rookie. He's a really, really good player. Uh, he's, he's very intelligent. And I think he's going to play a lot uh, this year. As you know, they lost uh, Gabe Vincent last season. Uh, they lost Max Strews. So it's a different team um, this year. Um, Tyler Hero's back healthy. Yeah, of they're going to be a much guys, different team. Say that again. No, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. We, we, we're getting a delay here, but um, I was going to ask you, you know, because they did lose some three-point shooting in Struce. You know, in fact, uh, you know, a couple of guys they lost who could, uh, uh, you know, offer three-point shooting. They still have Duncan Robinson. They still have Tyler Hero. Uh, you know, so I guess uh, are they going to rely on those guys more? Or do you think there's going to be other guys who could, they could rely on for that three-point prowess? Well, I, the reason I don't worry so much about the three Mac is if you re remember when we watched uh, the championship, the Denver and Miami, it didn't really come down to three pointers. It came down to the team that ran the offense the best. And sometimes those shots are not going to be three pointers. They're going to be good two pointers. The object is to score the most points. And I know we're in the Steph Curry era where all they talk about is a three pointer. But you still got to take your layups. You got to maximize your opportunities. And sometimes your opportunities are not making you live and living and dying at the three point line. You take your layups, you take, you take your mid range and you take your three points. Absolutely. And I think that's those are the teams to me that win. Uh, it's not the ones that go three point crazy. There's not too many Steph Curry's and Clay Thompson's that have ever been around, uh, especially in this era. You look at it now. Those are the teams, the Golden State Warriors. That's a team that shoots a lot of threes. But they won in 2021. But, of course, last year, you look at the Nuggets. The Nuggets didn't win because of the three-point line. They won because they have the best player in the league, uh, definitely the MVP in my mind, Nikola Jokic. And they just played the game. They let the game come to them. And whatever shots were the best shots, the high-percentage shots, those were the shots they took. And to me, that's why they were crowned as NBA champions. Okay, and the gentleman you was referring to, I think, is um, I, I'm, 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 you know, looking it up. Uh, Jaime Jacquez Jr. Jacquez Jr. He's a really good player. Really good player. Yeah, yeah, and you know, that that just shows my ignorance because I I haven't seen him play yet, but I'm gonna take your word for it. You saw him, Matt. You saw him in the NCAA tournament. Um, I guarantee you saw him in the Miami, tournament. Miami, that's right. Yes. You, okay, all right. The kid okay. can play. I mean, he's very mature. He has that mindset of a – He's a. am not saying he's a LeBron or those guys, a Chris Paul, those guys, but he has, He sees the game that way. No, he's, he's a smart heady ball. But okay, he's, you know what? The, you said NCAA, yeah. I remember. He's a very heady player, and I think guys like that, that's why I give Miami a good chance. And, of course, they still got uh, Jimmy Butler come playoff time. We know who Jimmy is. And I just think they're a team that's coached well. Um, they have a good organization. When you're looking at Pat Riley and Eric Spolstra, I think they've built this team. They, they wasn't so much a team that they went out and traded for this player and traded. They did it the old school way, the way we talk about doing it. They, they no, nurtured they, they these guys. The right brought, yeah, the Duncan. Yes. So that's why I like the Miami Heat, and they I give them the an right opportunity. Way. They do it the right way. No, people can say what they want about Pat Riley and, you know, what have you, but uh, that Heat organization, root for them or not, you got to admit they do things in such a way, you know, continuity, you know, continuity. So, uh, okay, so we're giving some love to the Heat. And I, as an Knicks fan, I hate the Heat, but you got to give them love because they're one of the best <laughs> run organizations. Uh, so, I mean, I guess we'll say Boston and Milwaukee for later because, I, you know, I think talking about them too much is kind of like stating the obvious, you know, water is wet, you know, that kind of thing. Can, 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 uh, I, can I say something, though, about Milwaukee? Go ahead. 
Because I know a lot. I know a lot of people jumped on that bandwagon after they acquired Dame Lillard. But I still have questions about Milwaukee. I'll leave it at that right now. But I, I'm not all the way in on the Milwaukee Bucks yet. Well, no. I mean, you know, um, you, you, no. Well, I mean, since you opened that door, I mean, we could talk about. Listen, you, you're the man, so I'm gonna follow uh -huh. your lead. Okay, so cool. let's talk about Milwaukee we, again. You know, we talked about this a little. First of all, folks, by the way, uh, this show is not scripted. You know, Derek and I talk about things on the regular, all right? But the show itself is not scripted. So he doesn't know what I'm going to come here with. I don't know what he's going to come with. Um, I may have some sort of an idea of his opinion of a certain topic. You know, I know how he feels about the Bucks because we talked about it. So uh, hit me with your uh, information about the Bucks and Dame Lillard. Well, for me, um, first of all, I don't think they're the same team that, that won the championship in 2020. Um, as right then, they were on they were on all cylinders. Uh, there wasn't a problem with the coach. Uh, Mike Budenholzer was the coach. Uh, Giannis was coming to it into his own. Uh, they went out. They made a nice trade. They brought in well, a couple of trades. They brought in Bobby Portis and they brought in Drew Holiday. So as you remember, they end up winning the championship, 2020 champions, Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, Giannis has, uh, ended the finals, I believe, with 50 points uh, in that, ser in that uh, championship year. I remember Giannis having a really big last game. But if you looked at them since then, Mac um, and the listeners, uh, Chris Middleton has not really been back up to that all-star caliber since his last injury. And it's taken him some time, but he has not been the Chris um, Middleton that we were used to seeing a couple of years ago. Um, they kind of changed. So PJ Tucker is gone. Let me just jump in real quick. Now, I just want to jump in one point. Since you brought up Middleton, again, I haven't seen him yet this season. All right. Uh, I've only seen a handful of preseason games, mm -hmm. but uh, I mean, he's had all this time to heal and get himself ready. So do you think that He'll come out. I, I I think he's gonna be fine, but the only the you other know, thing the Chris is, Middleton that we've become accustomed to. I don't know if we're gonna see that Chris Middleton because they acquired Dame Lillard, and before they acquired Dame, Chris was the second option, so he was giving the Bucks twenty points a night. You know that's and he did it consistently. I mean that's what he was doing, and he was also the guy a lot of times had the ball in his hands at the end. So now it's going. It's a different dynamic because now you have Dame Lillard, and you're going to have Dame initiating most of the offense. And so instead of Middleton and Giannis in the pick and roll, a lot of times or the pick and pop, a lot of times it's going to be Dame Lillard. So um, Middleton might be back to you know hopefully he'll be healthy, uh, but as now he's the third option. So we have to see how he adjusts to that. But my thing is Giannis has not been the same, Mac. If you look at it. Um, he, remember in the championship year, he had a, a, a standout game from the free throw line, 17 for 19. I will never forget it. And then this past <laughs> year, he missed 17 and free throws. Was counting down that game, too, when he got Say it again. Say it again. To the line. Weren't they counting down? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, they were doing Didn't the 10 seconds. Down, yeah. But he went to the line because, you know, he's very good. Yeah. 10 seconds. <laughs> yes. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Uh, yeah, so, but he, he, he shoved it down their throat. He, he, yeah, I remember that. But I, I wanted to ask you, since we're talking about Middleton and his role, now, I certainly don't know the man personally, but Middleton strikes me as such a gamer that oh, along with Dame Lillard, they, you know, he will figure it out. I believe that, but you know, sometimes uh, the ego comes in, Mac. When you're used to getting certain touches, and then you stop getting them, uh, it's kind of the same. We'll talk later about Bradley Bill. It's the same situation um, when you're playing with other stars that come in, and you're used to getting those 15 to 18 shots, and then now, now some nights you might only get eight to 10 shots. And I, you know, I'm like you. I could see Chris Middleton making the adjustment, but they, I can't. I couldn't assure it. Because, you know, there's a lot of times that today they call guys want to secure the bag. So they want to grow their brand. And a lot of times um, in the contract, they have stipulations 
bonuses that are attached to a guy getting a certain amount of points or yes. shooting a certain percentage. Things like that is what I factor in. A things that a lot of things that the people don't talk about, uh, or, or they don't talk about on television. So I always try to see how those things are going to go. But I could see Middleton being the type of guy that you know blend right in uh, with Bobby Portis and Brooke Lopez and all those guys. But there's still some unanswered questions because the biggest thing for me when I look at the Bucks is what they're losing on the defensive end. Dame averaged 32 points a, a game last year, and we all know who Dame is. Dame time, we know very well. But yeah, Dame you, you time, you know. we, but, they, <laughs> but they're taking, but they're taking, they're having a drop off defensively, because a lot of teams now are going to go at Dame Lillard defensively, and when and a lot of times they shied away from going at Drew Holiday. I know um, he had a rough series against Jimmy Butler, but people have to remember this: Drew Holiday is about six. Six four six five, maybe two hundred and five, two hundred ten pounds. Jimmy Butler six eight, about we looking about two thirty something. So it was a different matchup for Drew, and uh, I think some people are not giving Drew the credit he deserves because Jimmy had a breakout game, a fifty five point game or whatever. But Drew Holiday is still Drew Holiday, and so that to me that's going to be the biggest weakness is how they how they uh, deal with the loss of him defensively. Because okay. he brought right. a lot to the table defensively. And that's my biggest question right now. That's why I still have questions about the Milwaukee Bucks. I want to see what they can do as far as getting uh, crucial stops on the defensive end when it's necessary. Well, maybe they'll be an active team at the deadline to get someone who's got it more of a defensive presence. Uh, wow. Okay. So – we talked. We're not gonna. We're not going to Boston. <laughs> right? We're not doing that. It's, it's nah. too daggone simple. Too daggone easy. Uh, let's talk about Cleveland. Well, I, I can I tell you this one one thing. One reason I am intrigued by Cleveland this year. is because they brought in a young man, a rookie. Uh, at one time, he was touted as. He was on magazines just like a LeBron James uh, named Imani Bates. And Imani comes from uh, Eastern Michigan University, home of George the Iceman Gervin. And so um, a lot of people don't know. Recently, they <laughs> uh, a month ago, they put up a, a statue of my brother outside of Eastern Michigan. So, Mom, rest in peace. I love you. I'm just, I know you're proud of your son. And I am as well. So I'm cheering for them because I want to see Imani do well. And I just think that Cleveland has a lot to prove. If you look at the way they ended last season, and you know who they played, your team, New York Knicks. I thought Jared Allen and Evan Mobley, were they were absolutely horrific. And Jared Allen more so than, uh, than Mobley, Evan Mobley. Jared Allen, oh, man, it was a disappearing act. Um, I thought I was looking at the uh, old Ben Simmons. The one that made that pass against that Atlanta, Atlanta Hawks and never lived it down. That's what I saw in Jared Allen last year. I actually saw a deer in the headlights. And so that kind of bothered me. Um, and at one point, they were talking about trading him this year. That's how uh, upset they were with his play. But uh, they're giving him another opportunity. Uh, I think him and Evan Mobley, I want to see them together again for another year. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> and Donovan Mitchell uh, struggled as well, and Darius Garland. So they just had a rough outing. I think I'll have to give more credit to the Knicks more so than, I guess, beating down the Cleveland, <laughs> uh, Cleveland Cavaliers. I think the Knicks had a lot to do with that. Um, but I see Cleveland this year as a team that's trying to redeem themselves. So I see them as a better team, a more well-rounded team this year. Um, they've got some guys that they brought in last year that have another year of experience, and I think they're going to be a team that we can't overlook. Uh, I don't, I don't know if they're championship worthy yet, but on paper they look like a team that's going to be in contention. So we'll just have to see what happens. But I look forward to Cleveland having a pretty good year. I'm glad you said that uh, the Knicks had something to do with what you refer to as the disappearing act by Jared Ellen, you know, and really uh, before last season started, all the talk about were the Knicks going to get Mitchell? Donovan Mitchell. Uh, and, 
you know, and then of course they didn't get him. And you had people saying, "Oh no!" So when that matchup, Knicks Cavaliers came up, I remember Stephen A. Smith talking about the Knicks cannot go home to uh, and lose to Donovan Mitchell. Uh, they better win this series because <laughs> they have to justify not getting Mitchell and all this other foolishness. I love Donovan Mitchell, and out of all the people we've talked about, you know, like the the the, the ridiculous. I think they're ridiculous rumors myself. MB coming to the Knicks. Um, uh, uh, who's the other guy that said was coming? Sorry, uh... Well, there was somebody. There's somebody else who But anyway, the, 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 to me, all the rumors are absolutely ludicrous. I don't. I don't put a whole lot of stock into anything I've heard about the rumors of any of these guys coming to the Knicks. But that notwithstanding. Of what they've been talking about, Donovan Mitchell may still come to the Knicks. Why? I love Donovan Mitchell. Don't get me wrong. But he has played very well in Cleveland. They've accepted him in Cleveland. They love him there. And he's a good, he's in a good system for himself. You know? Uh, so I don't really think that's ser a serious notion either. You know, uh, Cleveland needs to just do keep doing what they're doing, and you know, I mean, that I guess that's a, I wasn't planning on this, but I guess that's a good uh segue to the Knicks. Um, again, the ridiculous rumors, I, I, you know, I, I'm not interested in any of it. Uh, I'd like to personally just see the Knicks, you know, groom their ball players. Now, of course, you make tweaks here and there, you make moves here and there. I'm just not sure that I want to see them basically gut the team, and that's pretty much what they'd have to do to get you know any of these guys probably. And um, I like what the Knicks are doing. I don't really see them. I, I certainly don't see them higher than fifth, you know. And I'm not sure I'd give them higher than six because the Eastern Conference is that tough. Um, but, you know, that that's just my take on the Knicks situation. You, you, you don't see them even at fifth in the, in the Eastern Conference? Oh, my goodness. I I know. I, I, and it's, it's, it's not that they played poorly last year. It's not that they've gotten so bad. I just think that other teams perhaps have caught up, like Toronto, like Chicago. I think they could possibly make some noise, you know, some some real noise to 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 the point where, uh, you know, spots six, seven, and eight are going to be up for grabs. It's, it's not going to be, you know, a, a walk in the park. There are a lot of teams that are good, and and I mean, I don't know that I expect a whole lot from the Wizards, but you know. Uh, In turn, I don't expect to make the playoffs, but the truth of the matter is, you know, even they're going to show improvement probably. So as far as the Knicks, yeah, I give them fifth or sixth. I think Chicago and Atlanta and Toronto are going to have a whole lot to say about the Eastern Conference itself. You know, um, I'm, I'm paying. I'm going to pay real close attention to Cleveland. I'm going to pay very close attention to Milwaukee, but. Uh, you know, my my pick, of course, is going to be Boston. You know, to come out the East. And so, with that, uh, I'm gonna let you go ahead. And, you know, you tell me what you think about the Celtics. It, well, before I get to the Celtics, I just I'm still trying to get people. The people know you from New York, Mac. Because <laughs> I just I'm, keep I'm, trying. I'm, I'm originally from New York. I'm a diehard Nick fan. You know, um, I mean, I've, and I have more faith, and I have more faith in Mister and in, in the Knicks than Mister Claire does. <laughs> well, my brother, but, but my role here on this show is not to be, a, you know, a, a homer. I'm, I'm just telling you what I, I really think. You know, I just I think that I talked I like to you all. Uh, I talked to you all last year about the Knicks, and I. I I just see them continuing to improve. Um, I believe in Jalen Brunson. Uh, 
I, I like Quentin Grimes. I, I like Quigley. Um, I, uh, Julius Randle's playing a different style of basketball. Yes. Uh, you and I, well, you wanted him to play more inside. And I'm and glad so you far, that up because I was going to. But go ahead. Well, he's, he's been doing that. So I, I just see a team that's continuing to ascend. I like them. I still think they're a big man short. I like Mitchell Robinson, but I think they could do better. Um, I like Hardenstein, but I think now I, this is why I, I'm gonna bring up the name, and you don't, you didn't want to hear it, but I could see a Joel Embiid. I don't want to hear it. I said. Well, we're trying to make the Knicks. Um, I like. I just think that the Knicks are doing better. Um, James Dolan's been a lot quieter. Um, hasn't been making waves. Well, um, we know the Charles Oakley and the Patrick Ewing and all the situations they've had. But all of that's uh, water under the bridge, it seems to be. And uh, I just think the Knicks are getting better. Uh, I think that, to me, the biggest holdback, um, I don't – Thibodeau. I like Tom Thibodeau, but I'm kind of thinking he's a little outdated. And I, and I have a problem when you have a guy like Evan Fournier, who's a, to me is possibly the best shooter on that team. I say it's either him or Grimes. And you continue to not play the man. I thought that he could have helped yeah. him in the playoffs it's, last year. They, they, I just I don't understand how Thibodeau is thinking, we, man. Sometimes we have to come out of our comfort zone, and I'm hoping see. that's what he'll do. We're going to see because uh, in four preseason games, and I saw them all, I think, uh, Fournier had two real strong ball games, 15 in the, uh, 15 one game, 11 to 12 in the other. Uh, shot the ball well, and he was aggressive. He was also going to the glass, you know, and um, so I think he's tr he's really trying to force his way into the rotation. The problem for Fournier, quite naturally, is is a, a numbers problem. But I do think that if Tibbs is smart, he'll find a way to give this man some minutes. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, I'm not the biggest Tibbs fan. You know, uh, I understand that, first of all, I don't understand that his calling card is defense, but the other night I saw his team give up 100, 100, how many points in the first half? I think they gave up 78 points in the first half to the Celtics. Now, I know it's the Celtics, so, you know, the first th thinking is no shame there, it's the Celtics. But it's not that they gave up 78 points as much as it's the way in which they gave up the 78 points. And so I'm saying this is a team that's coached by a man whose calling card is defense. You know, get, hell, give me Mike Dan. Tony, if that's the case, you know, tweak things or, they, you know, they, they better have it together, you know, starting tomorrow night. But, um, you know, I mean, we'll see what happens with the Knicks. I think that, you know, depending on where they are in the standings, uh, uh, you know, at the break, uh, they might make some kind of a move. It's really, obviously, it's way too early to tell what kind of move they're going to make. Uh, but I think Kevin Fournier, unfortunately, will probably be involved in it no matter what. Um, okay, so enough on the Knicks because I could talk about them a whole lot. But uh, let's talk about the Wizards. We got, we, yes, we have to talk about the Wizards. Oh, man, do we have to? Because all it is is going to be the Jordan Poole show. Poole taking 30 shots a game. He already got players over here unhappy because he's looking them all. And so they hadn't even <laughs> started the season yet. And he's already trying to lead the league in scoring. So I, I just think with uh, Kyle Kuzma yeah, and uh, Jordan he, Poole. He got 41 the other night. Yeah, I know, because he's shooting the ball every time. But that's not going to be a winning 41. So I, I, it's kind of – it bothers me because they have a young man on their team that I want to see play and do well. Um, his son – his the dad played with me. Um, the only championship I ever won was with the uh, lacrosse catbirds in the CBA, Continental Basketball Association. And our coach was Flip Saunders. Rest in peace, Flip. And uh, my teammate's name was Mark Davis. Uh, so his son is playing with Washington, yeah, Johnny yeah. Davis. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping that Johnny gets some run this year. Man, I don't want to see them just become a uh, Jordan Poole and Kyle, and Kyle Kuzma show. Because we've seen that in Dallas with uh, Kyrie and Luka. 
and that's just not winning basketball. So I'm hoping they uh, they got some pretty good pieces in uh, Washington. So I do expect them to play better, but I don't expect them to play better if uh, Kuzma and Poole are just dominating the ball. If, if they play and get all the other guys, the Corey Kisperts and all the other guys involved, then we're looking at an improved team. But if not, then we're just looking at a guy, uh, Jordan Poole, who's going to be interested in trying to lead the league in uh, scoring now that he's no longer a Golden State Warrior. Well, he, be, he, he you know, I, I hope he learns. I mean, I when, when I was coaching, I tried to keep it simple. I would tell the players to give the ball up, to get it back, you know, really. And I hope that's something that, The Wizards as a team, I mean, uh, all these guys could shoot. You know, Poole could shoot. Chris, 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 Chris he could shoot. Um, Kuzma could shoot. You know, I mean, they might make a little noise. I think they're a year away. I think they're yeah. a player or two away, you know. But, um, I mean, they have the makings of something. But, you know, see, to me, team basketball still has to prevail. You know, so uh, we'll we'll see how Jordan Poole plays during the regular season. You know, we're going to get a pretty good idea. After, you know, for me, it's going to be take about fifteen games, twenty games, and then I'll be able to say, "Well, all right, this is what I think they're going to do." I know you you usually know these things a lot earlier than I do, <laughs> um, for obvious reasons. But um, okay, so let's move on to. The Atlanta Hawks. The Atlanta Hawks were somewhat of a disappointment last year. Would you agree? Yes, and I don't see much um, change this year. It's not like they really upgraded their roster. Uh, you're still looking at the Trey Young, the John T. Murray uh, combo in the back in the back court. Uh, they still got John. Um, what's the big high jumper? John, uh, I can't even think of his name right now. And that's bad right there in itself. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, Collins. What's his name? The Collins? What's his name? Uh, Collins, John. Yeah. John and Collins, then, yeah. And you, and you got, uh, you still got the big fella from Houston that they got rid of for, West, for uh, Westbrook. Capella. Um, Clint Capella. Yeah, so even they, his name is escaping me now. That's sad. Yeah, Clint Capella. Yeah, but see, they Thank didn't you. really make they didn't really upgrade their roster that much. Um, I, so I'm still kind of you know confused what their goal is. I don't know. Uh, I know Trey Young had a really good year last year. Um, I don't even think a lot of people realize he averaged 26 and 10 assists last year, but it was just a more so of a one on one type show. Uh, DeJounte Murray was a lockdown defender here in San Antonio. Yeah. And he got yeah. to um uh, when he got to um Atlanta, I don't know if it became a competition between him and Trey. I, I just didn't figure out. It just doesn't seem like they blend very well together. And so I'm still looking at um Atlanta as a mid middle of the pack team. Maybe a, I I could see them inching they were it kind of like you say the Knicks with the sixth, seventh AC. I can see Atlanta sneaking in there, but they didn't really like upgrade their roster very much. And um, but it does give a new year. It's a new year for Quinn Snyder. So I think they will get better because Snyder is a heck of a coach. But I still see them as a mid-tier team. They I don't see them really uh frightening anyone as the season go on. They might frighten the Toronto Raptors and a couple of teams, but I don't see too many teams uh, being afraid to face the Atlanta Hawks. Okay. Let's go to Chicago Bulls. It's another team that didn't really make a whole lot of changes. Uh, they still got Patrick Williams, who's a year older. And he's still looking at Levine, who's been on the trading mar- trading block. Uh, we've heard rumors about uh, the, the, the Rosen being traded, uh, uh, Vucevic being traded. So the stuff, same stuff going on there that went on last year. Uh, I like the, Alex Caruso, of course. But their team didn't make a ma- any major upgrades either as far as contending. So I still see them as a team that will be fighting maybe for that A spot or to play in. And that's about as far as I can see them going right now. Okay. So, um, Toronto? Wow. Well, you know, they got rid of Fred Van Vliet, for one. Uh, he's going getting $40 million now. He cashed in in Houston. 
So, uh, but they're in the same situation. They've been talking about trading uh, Siakam, Siakam, trading OG Ananobi. So it's the same thing. Uh, I thought at some point it would already be the Scotty, uh, it's a young man, Scotty Barnes. I thought Scott it would Barnes, already yeah. be his team, but that hasn't happened yet. So for some reason, they're still hanging on to uh, OG Ananobi, and they're still hanging on to Pascal Siakam. So I'm looking at Toronto as one of those I'm teams that are probably too. making I, I, move. I, I, they move I see them making a move around the trade deadline. Teams like them and the Knicks. I still gonna you know say I'm gonna still say there's some positives there, but I see those teams trying to make uh, moves around the trade deadline. And so right now, um, I like the, the you know them having OG back and Siakam, but I think they're back mainly now as trade bait. So I see them uh, possibly being moved around uh, the trade deadline, and then we'll see what Toronto's about. But right now, I would just have them as a team that's fighting, just scratching and clawing to try to get into the play-in game. Okay, let's talk about the Nets. Let, let's get the Nets out of the way. I will tell you. You're just going to get my team out the way. Huh? Just, the team I play for, you just want to get them out the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 you know, uh, they, 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 are, they are tough to figure out. You know, they actually play Fairly well after the, you know, after all the dust settled, but you knew that they weren't going to make a whole bunch of noise, you know, uh, once playoff time came along. Um, and now they've got a full season. Well, the one good thing is John Vaughn's got, you know, he he, he had this, the preseason to implement his system. And so I think that's going to be key. I think they're going to be a better ball club. I'd give them a shot at the play in. I don't think I, I I you know I don't know that I don't know that I could pick a much higher than that. No, I'm with you. Um, but I say the good thing about the Nets, my team that I play for, um, I'm glad to see them. One thing that makes me the happiest is to see Ben Simmons. It looks like Ben is back mentally. Uh, we know the last few years, Ben has kind of had some challenges. Good this season. Yeah, this and I've been season. worried. I'm, yeah, you know, he it got to the point where he was really at a dark point in his life. Um, and you know, sometimes the game can do that to you when you we get negative press, and you you don't want to go outside. Um, you know, people start talking really bad about you, and and you know, it's like they had almost given up on Ben. So he looks like he's uh, re energized and that makes me happy because I'm a guy that always has been a Ben Simmons fan uh, I, I'm thinking this year he's going to come back and have a bounce back year um, and the reason I won't ever count them out uh, is because they play hard you know they're a team that plays 48 minutes um, Mikael Bridges play, has played really well uh, Cam mm -hmm. Johnson has continued to grind uh, now they got to figure out what they're going to do with Cam Thomas they because pieces. they have they, they have a 25 point score on their team Cam Thomas. They just, for whatever reason, uh, Jock Vaughn won't turn him loose. And so I'm hoping that they let him play a lot more this year. Um, of course, I'm a big Spencer Dinwiddie fan. Uh, he actually is uh, married to a friend of mine. Um, if you remember Andre Roberson, Roberson used to play sure. with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Sure. His sister is uh, with Spencer Dinwiddie. So I believe they had a house built in San Antonio. So I'm a that. big Spencer fan. So and wow. <laughs> so, you know, all that stuff factors in with me because I know some of these people okay. um, personally. So I think the Nets yeah. are going to be – they're going to be a team that's going to play hard. Uh, I think they can actually make the playoffs. It depends okay. on – I think if Ben plays really well and if he plays, like, anywhere near the Ben Simmons that we saw at the beginning of his career – and you put that together with Cam Johnson and then within those guys, I think that's a team that could maybe uh, ease into a, uh, I'm going to say play-in games. But even if you're a play-in team, that gives you an opportunity to advance and make the playoffs. And I'm thinking that, that, that I'm, I can't overlook the Nets. Let's say that. I think they're going to play hard every night, and I'm hoping okay. that they make the playoffs. Okay. Okay, fair enough. So, you know, I mean, it took us 45 minutes to get through the East. Uh, we've got 15 minutes to go. I know you're going to be doing another show after this one. So uh, let's do this. A brief 
synopsis of the Western Conference. Tell me um, who who your favorites are. Uh, well, we know who you favor, but that's besides the point. Without mentioning the Lakers, uh, tell me who else is in the mix. <laughs> Without mentioning the Lakers, how you about the team? I, I told you uh, not to mention how about, them. How about the team I picked to win it all last year, Mac? Okay. The Denver Nuggets. All right. Okay, and then you got the Phoenix. Now, here's the team that I, I have questions about, the Phoenix okay. Suns. And, um, go ahead. You ready to ask me ahead. something, Mac? No, no, go ahead. Uh, Phoenix Suns are the, would be the question, the biggest question mark for me in the NBA because uh, I don't know how it's going to work, but it's so far, I would say, so far, so good. You're going to have Bradley Bill or Devin Booker basically playing as a, as the playmaker. And so that's something that's new for both of them. Um, as you know, before they had Chris Paul running the show in uh, Phoenix. Well, so now you lose Chris Paul, you bring in Bradley Bill, who's been an all-star, but he's been an all-star as a scorer with the Washington Wizards. Um, so Bradley had probably his worst year, I would say, last year shooting-wise in the last four, five, six years. But he still averaged 23 points. So he, you know, I, look, I know he was looking back, you know, for a bounce back year. But now you go to Phoenix Suns and you go to a team that already has KD in place, Kevin Durant, and you got Devin Booker. So I'm interested to see how that threesome works. Um, as you know, they got rid of Chris Paul and they got rid of DeAndre Aiden. And they replaced them basically with Bradley Bill and you and Yusuf Nurkic, New Nurkic, who's the, with the Portland Trailblazers. So that's going to be interesting to me. Um, Grayson Allen was brought in. Uh, he's been fantastic in the preseason. Grayson Allen has been one of the standouts in the preseason. So I still have questions with Phoenix. But as far as getting to the final four in the East, in the Western Conference, I have no doubt in my mind that they'll be one of the final four teams. But I just don't know how they'll contend right now because I have to look at their rear protection. I'm wondering how they would deal with a Jokic come playoff times, how they, they would deal with a, a, a Anthony Davis and LeBron come playoff time. And then on the other end of the spectrum, I'm worried about how they would deal with a Steph Curry when it comes to playoff time. So I still have questions on uh, Phoenix. I'm not putting them in the championship and giving them the ring yet. Uh, I still have some questions about them that I have to be answered. Okay. That's fair. That's fair enough. All right. Um, you you know, I want to talk about the Trailblazers. I think that they're going to surprise some folks. Scoot on over there, Max. Scoot that way then. Huh? I said go ahead and scoot that way. Scoot towards the Blazers. Go ahead and talk about the Blazers. Scoot, scoot, scoot. Scoot Henderson is the man. <laughs> You know, I, I I know. I really think that they're going to surprise some folks. Uh, you know, I'm not quite sure what, you know, I'm not quite sure yet where their third offensive play, you know, the third option is going to be. I'm, I'm not really sure of that. Shaden, Shaden Sharp. Okay. That, that may, yeah, that does make sense. Uh, I think that they are going to be tough. And I think that you know, the the big moves that they made are going to pay off. Now, let's be clear. I expect them to get off to a very eh, so-so start, okay, uh, because of all the moves they made. But I'm telling you, by the time the All-Star break rolls around, I expect them to be rolling. And so uh, you can mark it down. It, it's, this is being recorded, but you can mark it down. I'm saying Portland's going to be in the final four of the conference, the Western Conference. Oh, my goodness. Well, I can't go against it. Um, they do have I, some I, pieces. Yeah. I, they I, have uh, yeah. Jeremy Grant is happy. They I gave him a new contract. So you really, that means you like Scoot. Yeah, you must really like Scoot a lot. I do. And, and you know, I yeah. I mean, I can't, and I'm going to move forward now. 
Personally, I cannot trust the Clippers. I can never, ever, ever trust the Clippers. Think about the players that have come through that organization. And they've never gotten it right. And I and I, you know, this goes this goes way back before the days of, of Sterling. All right. This goes back before the days of the San Diego Clippers. All right. This goes back to Buffalo. I can go for a whole slew of real super ball players that they have picked up and they've got gotten rid of for one reason or another, whether it was a boneheaded trade by Magnum for John Ginelli, um, you know, or, 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 you know, a dumb throw in, including Tom McMillan in the trade, and he played very well for the Knicks. Um, you know, Ernie D. Gregorio, Randy Smith, John Shoemate. They even had Adrian Dantley at one time, Moses Malone. We haven't even gotten to San Diego yet. <laughs> okay, so... They have had this propensity of getting good ball players, no matter who the owner is, no matter who the GM is. So I'm gonna fast forward. I'm gonna skip past the boneheaded days of a young DeAndre Jordan <laughs> and Blake Griffin. I'm gonna skip past that because we understand they were young and you know the, the, the only thing they knew was highlight reel. Get on the highlight reel. Get on ESPN. I'm gonna move past that. Because now you have a mature ball player in, in in Paul George, you have a mature ball player, a superstar in Kawhi Leonard. And I mean, I guess things are gonna be a little bit different this year because Kawhi is gonna to have to play. There's not gonna be all this load management BS. So, you know, if you're gonna be out there playing, you're gonna be out there playing, you know, for hard. You know what I mean? So I think the Clippers are going to give maximum effort. I, I I hate to say this, but I don't give them. I I give them sixth place, seventh, seventh place. There's just too many damn teams. That, listen, and 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 you know, I mean, all right, you in, in, in no particular order, okay? But you know, the Golden State is gonna be in the mix. I am not sleeping on the Sacramento Kings. Right. Okay. Uh, in fact, I'm going to make a prediction about them in a minute, a bold prediction. Okay. Uh, you've got Oklahoma City who has mm -hmm. they're going to be tough. Improved. And mm -hmm. if you don't believe it, folks, you go ahead to you go ahead and you look back at some of the videotape from when the season first started. To when they ended the season, they were solid. They were phenomenal. And I think they're going to do some big things this year. Um, but, I mean, there's just so many teams to pick from. But now I'm going to go to my bold pick. I made a bold pick about Portland. I'm going to make a bold pick about the Kings. I you think got this them is in the final four. To get to the final four, of the, I got them in the final four. I of got the them Eastern in the final four. And let me just Eastern... why. Let, let me just say this. This this is a vote toward up tempo. This is a vote for sharing the basketball. This is a, a vote for togetherness. And you know, this is also a vote for a lack of ego. You know, enough ego to be. You know, to, to 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 play the game, but enough willingness to sacrifice. I think the Kings have that. I'm not saying they're gonna win the chip, but I put them up. I, I'll tell you what, I put them ahead of the Clippers right now. So I, I. I don't trust. I don't trust Paul George to be to stay healthy. Never mind the uh, uh, load management. I don't trust Paul George to stay healthy. I don't trust Kawhi Leonard to stay healthy. That was the reason why they had all them damn low management. Well, the game's off. Right. You, so why do I, I couldn't trust say it any better? Okay, I couldn't so, say it any better. But, but I am gonna say this: way to go, my team, Denver Nuggets, started off with a bang. <laughs> what was the final score? 
I don't know. They won by double figures, I believe. Okay. All right. And so uh, now, I and I meant to bring this up earlier, and I didn't, you know. Uh, I'm sorry that we're giving the Lakers, you know, the last five minutes or so. But um, no, I'm not, because there's going to be plenty of time to talk about the Lakers. But in any event, uh, I thought that when I first turned on the TV, they were already down 18. And so my first thought was, okay, so all the talk they did during the preseason about seeing the Nuggets, they can't wait to see the Nuggets. Well, they're right there in person in front of you. Game one of the <laughs> season. And you're down 18. And I understand, I understand it's the first game of the season. I get that. But the way they were whooping, I expected to turn the game on and see the Nuggets down by 30. You know, oh, I didn't, I didn't expect add that. that. Add to everything else, not that it's only opening night, but I would imagine that the Nuggets are a little bit overly hyped because they, they, they did get their rings tonight, I assume, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, you know that there's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of a lot of stuff going on, and based on I mean, based on what you're telling me, and based on what I saw, uh, the Nuggets handled their business. Well, they're the team to beat, so we'll see what yeah, happens uh, as we move forward. Yeah. So, uh, so now, until the next time, the Nuggets and Lakers to get together. All right, we will not. mention the Lakers no more because <laughs> you know I, I I mean I'm not rooting for them I'm not rooting for them but I I really did think well they're gonna put a fight they go that you know they they might they might take the Nuggets back out to which it they this is the night where they could have done that like I said with everything else going on this was the night for them to do it and only game one okay uh -huh. We got a long, a long season ahead. No, I understand one. that. I understand that. But I'm just saying, this was the oh, night yeah. when they could have done it and they did it. You know. Mac, I want uh, to thank you, okay. man. For, I want to tell you, first of all, I want to thank you for starting this show. And I hope your people continue to listen in because the show only going to get better. And I'm, I'm proud to have been a part of it today, man. I'm, I'm a happy guy. Well, I'm, 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 I'm grateful. You know, for and, and you know what, with Thanksgiving right around the corner, let me just get a head start. I don't want to turn this into a love fest, but but I've truly been blessed, uh, you know, beyond measure. All right, more so than what I deserve, probably. But I've been blessed to have people like you, Derek. You know, come to my life. And for full disclosure, Derek and I have never met in person, but Derek and I have been good friends now. What year? Yeah, it's been over a year, yes. Yeah. And uh but you know, Derek and I just click. We see eye to eye, except when it comes to the Lakers, but that's a whole nother story. Mm -hmm. But uh uh no, I've been blessed to have a guy like you know, you you know, come in my life and uh it it, it, it may sound strange to people listening to this, but you know, even having never met you in person, uh, you're certainly one of my best friends. You're in, you're in my inner circle, you know, and I, you know I'm some fine. things about me, uh, you know, that I don't share with everybody. But, uh, you know, not trying to sound like the Golden Girls theme song, but thank you for being a friend. <laughs> thank you, man. I love you, Mike. I thank you. We love you back, man. Okay, so I know you've got to go. Um but I'm going to give you 30 seconds to say something about the Lakers. I, I, I didn't mean to, to this. We just no, I, 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 I like the Lakers. I like the additions that they made, uh, the Cam Reddish, Jackson Hayes, uh, Gabe Vincent, and Torian Prince. Uh, I think they're going to be a, a, a team that's contending again, uh, but I think they're going to come up a little short. Uh, I'm picking the Denver Nuggets to repeat as champions to defeat the Boston Celtics. And, Hey, that's my pick tonight. I haven't made my picks until tonight. I'm picking the Denver Nuggets to repeat. Okay. And I'm going to say this about the Lakers. 
a full season with Cam Reddish, a full season with uh, Reeves as the starter, um, you know, a full season with with uh, Hachim, Hachimura on the team, you know, I and, and they've improved their three-point shooting. So even though I'm not rooting for the Lakers necessarily, I like what they did with the roster since middle of last season. So, yeah, I mean, the reality is they are absolutely in the hunt. Okay, so it's, again, it's been an hour. Derek, thank you so much. Uh, we'll do this again. Uh, well, we'll let y'all know exactly what we're going to do again. Uh, Till next time, this is Matt Claire for Derek Gervin saying, be blessed, do something nice for somebody, and uh, keep rooting for your team. I love you, Mac, and thanks for tuning in, everybody. See you again next time.